this evening. So, so, so glad to have you. Actually, my partner in crime is not with us tonight, so I'll be doing the webinar um, on my own this evening. But as you're popping on, you know me, I love to hear ex exactly where you're located. So um, if you would, put in the chat box, chat box me, and let me know exactly where you are. Um, tonight um, is a, a, one of my absolute favorite topics. Um, about you know how to find deals. Hey Brandon from uh, South Carolina, uh, Dietrich from Orlando. We got Dale from New Orleans. I actually talked to Dale today. Um, Mark from Spring Valley, New York. So 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 glad to have you. Welcome everyone. Um, hope you're having an awesome Tuesday, um, man. I know us in our office and our team is really just kind of getting ready for the week here. Um, actually, this weekend, we are hosting our live event. Um, we um, have, man, I think we're going to have around 300 people at this event. Um, and I cannot wait to actually meet a lot of our partners. One, Hey, Elisa, uh, glad to have you on. Tony Robinson from Canyon Hills, California. William, right here in the ATL. We got James in Pompano Beach. Um, you know, one reason why we do these events is so we're able to actually meet our partners, which is friggin' amazing. Um, because you know, it's, it's nice if you're doing deals with somebody to, to actually meet them. We got a Deborah in uh, California. Hey, Miss Deborah. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, looking forward to that this weekend. A lot going on this week. Actually, I think we have about five closings going on this week with our students. We got Fred McKenzie in Denver, Colorado. Um, he is looking to start soon. And you're going to love this, Fred, by the way, because tonight um, I'm going to show you one way to find deals that no matter if you've been doing this business for like forever or you're just getting started, this is something that each and every one of you can do and can excel at. Hey, Jim from uh, Palm Beach or West Palm Beach, excuse me. I have to get me some water. It's crazy. I don't know who in the world gets allergies in the middle of summer. Apparently I do. <laughs> but, you know, kind of I want to get, you know, past the reason why we do this. So the reason why we meet here every Tuesday night um, is so that we can try to provide value to those of you that are looking to get into real estate investing or another way to reach out with current people that we're already doing deals with. That's really our goal with these Tuesday night webinars. Um, we've been very, very committed to this for, geez, I would say at least a year now to where we, we cover different topics. That way you're able to meet Peter and I. Um, for those of you that, that don't know me, I'm, I'm not necessarily the front face of Partner Driven, but I am a master coach here at Partner Driven. Hey, Brad from Marietta. Um, and the last six years, about six and a half years, I've had the pleasure now to have completed around 1,600 deals. Yes. 1600 deals and uh man this business whoo did it change my life i mean i absolutely love it you know different people love different parts of this business but some of the things we're talking about tonight is we're going to be talking about how to find deals direct to seller as much as i love selling th things on the back end working all those different things my favorite part is actually meeting with the people out in the field and getting deals under contract and talking to owners. Um, I would say that's probably, you know, the thing that I'm the best at, right? Um, and that's what we're going to be covering. But I do want to get, you know, through a couple of things with you. You know, for those of you that are joining us the first time, Peter and I do offer a partner-driven real estate coaching program. And it's unlike any coaching program you've ever seen because really, I mean, it's, it's not just a coaching program, but for me, the way that I look at it is, is it's more of a partnership. 
My goal is, is not to just train people. My goal is to build relationships and have partners across the country so we can do more deals. I mean, Peter and I and our team in Atlanta, we can only do so many deals by ourselves, right? But with abundance of others, we all reach our goals. So, you know, one thing about being a partner of ours is not, not only to find deals, we provide leads for you. We provide daily training. Yes, believe it or not, daily training, Monday through Friday, where we, we not only give you hypothetical situations on how to get deals, but I personally will show you exactly how to call people on the phone right? Show you, you know, how to work these leads so that you can get things under contract and inevitably make money. Because I, I believe, maybe I'm just speaking, you know, here, but one of the reasons why you chose to be on this webinar tonight, or you're already in our program with a lot of these wonderful people um, that I see on here this evening, is because your goal is to do this full time, right? To get out of that rat race of life and, and, and really live the life that you dream and live the life that you control. Now, I will say, you know, I work as hard, just as hard as the next person, um, but I'm able to control my schedule. That's why we do what we do. But get this, with our partner program, if you find a deal that we decide to buy, fix, and sell, we're actually going to fund the deal and split the profits with you 50-50. Yes. I mean, seriously, we're going to um, fund the deal, fund the rehab, everything that it takes. And in the end, we split profits 50-50. Now, on top of that, one of my favorite strategies just so happens to be wholesaling. So we're not only showing you how to do fix and flips, but how to wholesale. Because for you to consistently make money in this business, you really need to know multiple strategies. I don't quite teach this to the public, but for those of you that work with me, if a deal comes across the table that, that I can help you do a subject to a lease option or a wrap, we will help you do that as well. So because we've done all these different types of deals, which thank goodness, right? Um, <clears throat> we, you can learn from some of our mistakes in the past, right? And, and put you in a direction to where you're able to, to really move quicker, okay? So you're going to be going faster. I'm all about being in a team environment. I mean, ever since I've gotten started in this business, actually, strangely enough, I got started as a property locator for Peter. And what I'm showing you tonight is what I was able to perfect to be exactly where I am today. But if you would like to learn more about being one of our partners, okay, and I say just Peter and I, but it's not just Peter and I, it's Peter, myself, our other business partner, Rafael Zabala, that's actually runs these webinars, that's behind the scenes making a lot of our technology and things work. It's Mary, our closing coordinator, Laura, our office manager, Juhi, Daniela, um, um, Delena, Patrice, Christine, Kristen, um, Anika. We've got all of these people in the back end, right? That are really helping you along the way. Because the goal for us is not to throw you out there to the wolves and then you just learn from just experience, okay? We want you to learn and kind of guide you through the way. I mean, just right now, I got a text from a gentleman I'm working with by the name of Corey. He got his first deal under contract like two days ago and I am going to help him sell it, but it's a great deal. So I advised him how to market that property out to buyers and he don't even know what to do with himself because his phone is blowing up with people wanting to buy the property that he has under contract. Man, is that not awesome? Hey, and by the way, guys, I definitely look at the chat here. So if you have anything you want to add or any questions, Throw them up there. I'm going to, I'm going to answer them for you. But if you want to be like Coria, Corey, if you want to be like one of our other partners that's doing deals each and every day, um, then all you've got to do is visit our website at www.partnerdriven.com. 
Now, I will say, I'm going to give you a couple different phone numbers so that you can contact us. I don't work on that side. I work on working with our partner side. Hey, uh, Brandon, welcome, Fred. Um, so if you would like to call Peter directly, you can call him by going by dialing 404-948-6604, right? Hey, and by the way, I do want to say this, and I think Rafa told me today, we have about seven spots left for our live event that's here in Atlanta this weekend. You can actually register to come to this event this weekend by going to partnerdrivenlive.com. Um, and and you can actually be here this weekend with us. It's free of no charge. Brandon's actually one of our partners, and he would like to uh, discuss the deal with me. Um, Brandon, if you would just schedule a call. And and by the way, when you're a partner, you can schedule a call with me at any time, so that you're able to go over your deals and and go over things about your business. So Brandon, you know how to get in touch with me. I don't want to put it out here live because I only open my calendar for people that I work with. Um, so Ben wants to know how long does it take to, for, for him to get his first wholesale deal? I would say on average, even though I see people that can get their first deal in the first week or so, right? Or the first month. You really got to give yourself about three months. That is more of a realistic expectation. Now, <clears throat> this is not a get rich quick scheme, okay? This is a business that you have to work at. It requires prospecting, it requires doing anything. It's just like opening a franchise. You've got to put the time and effort in there to get the deals done. But if you guys would like to learn more about how to be my how to be our partner, you know, all you've got to do is go to our website at www.partnerdriven.com. And when you go to that website at partnerdriven.com, it's going to send you a proposal document. This proposal document is going to tell you everything that we do, everything that we provide for you. So the, there's no questions to ask about that, right? Um, but if it's okay with you guys, um, and, and listen, whatever you do, go ahead and go to that website and check it out. Don't sit on the fence and wish you could have, would have. We got a lot of things changing in the market right now, okay? And you need to learn how to be on both sides. This business can be very good if the market's high and if the market's low, especially if you know how to work in both of those types of markets. But tonight, I'm going to show you one way to find deals that no matter what the market is, no matter what your education level is, no matter what you've done in the past, right? This is going to be a way that you can find deals. For a lot of you that are partners, you've heard this from me before. However, you know, repetition, 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 right? Oh, and Dale, I can't wait for the app either. Also, we are creating an app that comes out. Y'all will be seeing more about that soon. <clears throat> but tonight, what we're gonna be discussing is we're gonna be discussing driving for dollars, okay? There's many ways that people do driving for dollars. However, the way that, that we do it and the way that we have you guys do this particular strategy is, is a way for you to find deals and leads that maybe other people aren't finding. So think about this. I mean, we are in 2019 to where you can go to the internet and purchase leads. Everybody may be purchasing vacant property lists, people with liens on their property, people with pre foreclosures, things like that. So that you're one click away from finding those lead sources. Whereas this requires very, very little money invested. Whether you go with us or not, whether you're working with Peter and our team in our partner driven coaching program, this is something that you can do on your own to be successful. Okay, because I do like to add value, but this is also something I can help you with. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right. So when I say driving for dollars and wow, you can you can seriously make bank. 
I don't say this to brag, but just in this particular marketing strategy alone, I've probably made well over $5 million just doing this strategy. Like I said, it's one of my favorites because I love working and dealing with people. So let's go ahead and move on. I do want to talk to you about this a minute. So y'all just hang in there with me if you don't mind, okay? So um, one thing that I do want to mention is, is that it's very similar to, um, let, let me just start by asking you this. Oops, let me go backwards here. Sorry, I'm not great at presenting here. <clears throat> but let's let's look at this old car okay so what I want all of you imagine and I promise y'all I've got a point right I want everybody on here to imagine that they are have the disposable income to buy any let's say a car that they want particularly like an old classic car like for me, one of my dreams, I'm just haven't went and got one yet, nor am I, am I there yet because I'm working on a few other things, but I want a classic car. I want to go to car shows with my husband. I just, it's always been a dream of mine. Um, and you can go ahead and put it in the chat box. If you had the disposable income right now, okay, think about it, and you could buy any classic car. What would it be? Maybe it's a 69 Mustang. Maybe it's a, a 64 Corvette. Please let me know any classic car that you might buy if you had the disposable income to buy it. Promise you it's going to make sense here in a little bit. Let me know. Come on. I know some of you guys love classic cars. Oh, Wayne says a drop top Eldorado 76. Dale wants a 68 Camaro. Rafa wants a 65 Mustang or a 77 Corvette Stingray. I totally agree. <clears throat> Keep them coming, guys. I mean, think about it. If money wasn't an issue, what would you buy? Shane wants a, um, a 33 Plymouth Coupe, uh, a Chevy SS67, a 64 Cobra, an 86 convertible Mercedes, um, 57 Chevy, a Chevy Chevelle convertible, these are all great answers. Okay, now hang with me, okay? Let's just use this 57 Chevy. I want you to imagine you've got the money, okay? And you're driving down the road and you look out in somebody's yard. And sure enough, there's a 57 Chevy in that yard. But guess what? It's not for sale. However, the grass has grown up around it, right? The tires are flat. It needs body work and a paint job. Please tell me what you would do to try to buy that car. Go ahead and put it right here in the messages. I want to hear from you. If you wanted that 57 Chevy your whole life and your dream car that needs work is sitting in somebody's yard and you know good and well they're not doing anything with it, what would you do to try to buy that car? Let me know. Let me know. And think, think about this. Ben said he would get out, knock on the door, and talk shop. Exactly, Ben. Brandon's going to speak with passion. Make an offer. Knock on the door. Walk up and say hi. Ask if they want to sell it. These are all of these things. Go to the door and find a way. Exactly. But let me ask you this. You would not find that weird, would you? I mean, would you find that weird to knock on the door if that 57 Chevy was in their yard? No. You wouldn't find it weird to knock on the door. You wouldn't find it weird to send them a letter. And you certainly wouldn't find it weird to give them a phone call, would you? No, you would not. Now, what I want you to imagine is that what you are doing with driving for dollars it's the same thing with houses instead of the car so let's talk about some of the few things that you should be looking for with properties okay the same things the same way you're going to talk to somebody about that car is the same way you're going to talk to them about their house which by the way this is incredible i'm going to actually share my script with you tonight on how to make these calls <clears throat> 
Number one, I want our partners to hear it more and more and more and to be freaking brilliant at this. And number two, for those of you that might not be a partner yet, you know, I want to bid you good luck out there in, in, in going and making this happen, right? And be brilliant at the basics. So tell me some things that you might see at a property that might lead you to believe that the house is in a distressed situation. Now I'm going to give you a few hints. Number one, the house can have people living there or it can be vacant, but y'all give me some feedback. What are some things you might see at a house that might make you think, huh, that's a good one for me to call on. That's a good one for me to send a letter or a good one for me to um, knock on the door. Marty says, call gra tall grass, no curtains. Perfect. Growed up landscape, right? Ba ben says bad roof, bad windows. Um, somebody on their smartphone said bunch of mail in the mailbox. Bryant said newspapers in the driveway. Exactly. Papers in the yard from, uh, from Randolph. Keep them coming. It's going to, it's going to, it's really going to help us all to, to notice these things. Okay. So ugly compared to their neighbors exactly you know how like you're driving through like a neighborhood and personally i believe you should all be working in blue collar working class areas that's where you're going to find people that may be in a distress situation or their home might be in a distress right robert said plywood on the windows rotted eaves and overhangs and roofs trash not being moved exactly but when you see these things, what you should be doing is you should be writing these addresses down, okay? Whether they're vacant or whether someone lives there, right? So that this is a potential lead for you. I wanna show you another thing here though. I want to make sure we are picking right things. Do you all see this house here? you are looking to wholesale and to fix and flip houses, right? So if something is a complete teardown, unless it's in a very desirable area to where the land value is super high, like example, like Buckhead um, in Atlanta, um, Los Angeles, places like that, I would completely stay away from properties like you're seeing right here. Because here's my kind of my joke. Has any of y'all ever seen this movie, The Money Pit? It's literally like that. You don't always want to be looking for just completely distressed properties. Maybe it's one thing about that house that you might think, huh, because they're not fixing that, it leads me to believe that they might be in a stress situation. I mean, most people, if they have the money, they take care of their property right? So that's not necessarily something you would want to flip as a property like this. However, you can wholesale those. Now, I do want to show you some prime examples of some homes that I've flipped and that I found driving for dollars, okay? This is actually in Jacksonville, Florida. This was a property. I did not flip this one. Actually, I wholesaled this to a buy and hold investor. Um, this is another property that is in that was in Dawsonville, Georgia. Here's another one in Gainesville, Georgia. Here's another one in Jacksonville. Do you guys see the difference in this house as opposed to the other slides that I had? Do you see what we're looking for here? Like in this house, we could just tell right here that something's wrong with the roof. You see that? Do you see the growed up landscape? and the tall grass and the way that the walkway. This is a prime example of what you should be looking for when you're out driving for dollars. This house right here has grown up landscape, okay? There's, like the gentleman said before, there's nothing in the windows, meaning there's no blinds, there's no curtains. I could tell by looking at this that this was a vacant property. Okay. Also, this is in North Georgia, the lack of blowing the leaves, stuff like that. <clears throat> this other property um, that I'm looking at right here, you know, just hanging out in the garage, not doing the roof. This is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. This is what you should be looking for. 
okay? So you're probably wondering, let me see if we have another slide here. You're probably wondering, okay, so once I find these properties, what do I do with them? Okay, well, if you're in our partner driven coaching program, then all you have to do is submit those addresses to our office. And what we do is we determine who the owner is, what their mailing address is, along with their cell phone numbers. Okay, um, if you're doing it on your own, then you're going to need to go look through the tax records and figure out who the owner is. And then you're going to need to pay for a skip tracing service so that you can determine what their information is. It can be done in our program. We just take the guesswork out of it because I want people I work with to be out there doing money-making activities instead of a lot of this admin work. But hey, you can go skip trace to find your own you know, owner cell phone numbers as well as their mailing address. I want you to send everybody on your list a letter, okay? And if you want to be really, really, really good, you're going to handwrite the envelope to ensure that they're going to actually open that piece of mail, right? Now, let's go ahead and get into the call. Now, for the, some of you, when you hear making cold calls, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. Listen, when you start making the kind of money I've made off of doing driving for dollars, making these cold calls is like the funnest thing you're ever going to do. I promise you, it gets easier and easier and easier, okay? <clears throat> I do wanna answer a few questions while we're here. Ron wants to know, do we have an automated tool to locate bankruptcy, foreclosure, vacant properties, et cetera? Yes, Ron, and by the way, when you're a partner of ours, we provide that to you as part of the service, as well as figure out what their cell phone numbers are, okay? Just to kind of get past that. Now, by the way, if you guys have any questions as I'm going along, feel free to ask. I don't mind to share everything with you. Um, I want to talk to you about making these calls, okay? The way that you, it's not what you say, it's how you say it when you're making these calls. So I have a few questions for you. There are two types of people in the world. Number one, there are people that flee situation. I mean, there are people that are fighters and there's people that, that are fleers. And let me tell you, 90% of the population are fleers. In any situation, what might cause somebody to want to flee a situation? Go ahead and put it in the chats here and let me know why somebody might flee a phone call, why somebody might flee a situation. I know it's hard to get your fingers topping so fast, but let me know why. <clears throat> I have a point here as to why. Rafa said you're, they, they might be afraid of communication. A cheating wife. That's hilarious, James. Tom said fear. Uh, collector calls. Rejection. Exactly, Shane. No self-confidence. Maybe they owe money. So what I want you to realize that their lack of understanding <clears throat> all of these are prime reasons why someone might flee a situation when you are making these phone calls your goal is not to get a deal your goal is not to do anything but make someone feel comfortable on the other end so that they're not afraid of the confidence so they're not afraid of a bill collector because they're not afraid of, of what you're talking about the goal here is for you to make them feel comfortable. Once you learn how to be yourself and to talk just like you would about that 57 Chevy, keep that in mind, then you're going to be awesome on the phone, okay? And even though I am going to use a script here, you have got to be yourself. We all are way, way, way different people right? We're, we're all different in different ways. So you don't want to use the same words that I do. You want to use words that you use and be yourself. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and go through the call here. 
And um, I'll tell you exactly how I call people and how to, for about every 70 houses that I find, I actually complete a deal by sending letters and making these calls. Okay, y'all ready? Perfect, perfect. All right. So we're going to be calling John. Okay. John, hey, this is Julie. How are you doing today? <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, the reason for my call is actually the other day I was driving down Main Street and I saw this property that I believe that you own at uh, 1735. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I buy fix and sell houses and I buy and rent them out. And whenever I saw yours, I mean, it was exactly what I was looking for. And I was just wondering if there was any way, John, that I could come out there and, you know, meet with you, take a look at the property and make you an offer for it. Okay. I'm going to do this one more time and I'm going to break this call down for you as to why I'm saying the things that I'm saying. Okay. And I'm literally, I would have said the same thing if I was calling about that 57 Chevy. Okay. John, Hey, this is Julie. How are you doing today? I personally like to go ahead and assume the call. And so by saying, you know, John, how are you doing today? Normally John will be like, Julie, 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 do I know you? Can I help you? Yeah, well, actually, John, the reason for my call is the other day I was driving down Main Street and I saw this property that I believe that you own at a 1735. What I'm doing there is I am saying, do you own the house at 1735 Main Street without coming off too strong, just in a different way? And you'll say, well, like, well, yeah, but, uh, well, why are you calling? Well, you see, I buy, fix, and sell houses, and I buy and rent them out. And whenever I saw yours, I just loved it. I mean, it's exactly what I'm looking for. And I was wondering if I could come out there and, you know, meet with you, take a look at the property, and uh, give you an offer for it. Okay. So, a lot of people you will hear, and we all just have different ways of doing things. But when you call somebody and say, I'm a real estate investor, I want to make you cash off for your property, close quick, all of that lines of stuff. What you're doing is you're making someone feel fearful. If you're not a real estate investor and you're calling as a real estate investor to let's say a mechanic, how do you think that's going to make him feel? Do you think that's going to make him feel warm and fuzzy inside? Absolutely not. You want people want to do business with who they know and they trust. So no matter how many deals I do, I'm still just Julie from down the road who wants to come and talk to you about your property that I fell in love with when I drove by it. Okay. In our program, this is just one of the many ways that we show you how to find these deals, okay? Just tonight, we happen to be going over driving for dollars. But literally, guys, I encourage you that if you're on tonight and you're sitting on the fence about whether you should do this or not, listen to me. Do I look, do I look like I have some special training? I've always just been myself. I didn't go to college. I was in the lawn care business before I started this. And actually, I was bankrupt and all sorts of bad stuff. Well, let's just say I'm not there now. But this is a business of people. This is one way you, no matter how much money you have, I mean, you are going to have, some, have to have gas money, uh, money for the letters and stamps, right? But this is something you can go out and you can do immediately. All right. Don't just watch, you know, webinars and don't put, you know, not, not put one foot in front of the other, other. I guarantee you, you will find a deal doing this. I mean, for me, I know all I've got to do is go find 70 of them. If I find 70, I'm going to average a deal. Yes. I may go on two or three appointments and not get them. Um, but, but, you know, I'm going to get a deal. Now, let me tell you how you make money when you find it. So number one, 
So once you go to the property and let's say you make an offer and you know, in our program, by the way, I go over exactly what offers you should be making, but once you make an offer, you're going to put the house under contract. Once you put the house under contract, then you're going to start your inspection or your due diligence period. And in that time, you're going to determine, am I going to wholesale it or am I going to flip it? Or maybe for those of you that want to buy and hold properties, maybe it's a buy and hold. So like this particular property that I chose to flip, um, we decided to flip it after I got it under contract. This one, I decided to wholesale and make money. I think I made about 16 grand on this particular house right here. Um, most of my wholesale deals average between 7,500 and 15,000 a deal. Um, and yeah, at some points I was doing five to seven of those a week. So, but if we were to enter in any of these situations, we're going to be there every step of the way. You know, I said I had that like team in the back, such as Mary, the closing coordinator. I don't want you to lose deals at the closing table. So when you're working with us, we're going to help you get it to the closing table, help you get it wholesale. Just like I was talking about Corey earlier, who's working on, um, who's working on his first wholesale deal or Jamari, who's on his, actually his third deal closes the next week. who just closed the second one last week. That's why we do what we do. But whenever you wholesale properties, what you're doing is you're placing it under contract and then you're selling it to another investor at a higher price. You're not selling the house, you're selling the contract, okay? Obviously, if you're going to fix and flip a house, then you're buying it, fixing it up, and then reselling it. Now, one thing that we do is we'll actually pay for the purchase price of the home, all of the inspections, the rehab and everything. And then in the end, all the net profits are split 50, 50. And that's how, you know, you're going to be making money, you know, in this business. Now I, um, this is what I have for you tonight as it relates to your driving for dollars and how to do these leads. But listen, um, any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat box here, right? Um, our average deal splits, um, I just want to kind of keep telling you a few things, are anywhere between 15 to 40,000. Um, I have a partner right now that makes well over $100,000 a month just on his side. I mean, that means we're making 200,000 together and he's keeping 100,000. And like literally, the, he just turned 30. Now he's committed, he is great at what he does, and he's brilliant at the basics, okay? Strange story, actually earlier this year in February, I went to go visit him in Modesto. I took his team out driving for dollars, doing this exact same strategy in a town I had never been to. I was there for four days. I got, I was able to lock up two houses under contract just by doing what I'm telling you right now in a city I don't live in that I just traveled to. Once we got done by fixing and selling those properties, the first one we made, it was a smaller deal. It was more like 22,000. The other one was close to 60 grand and we were able to split those profits, right? So it doesn't matter where you are in America. You can do this. Just understand you've got to focus on your blue collar working class areas. <clears throat> I'm not saying you're not going to find distressed properties in, let's say, really high end neighborhoods, but the efficiency of you driving around and doing those things is just, does it make sense? And think about who buys houses. Who do you think buys more properties in America? Anybody want to comment on who, what type of people do you think buy more properties in America? Keith wants to know, does earnest money, how does the earnest money deposit work on a wholesale deal? So Keith, um, what we do with our partners is actually, is that we'll put up the earnest money, but it's always going to be held at our title company and or our uh, closing attorney's office.
this. But with our partners, we put the earnest money up. But Dell's right. Most of the buyers in America are working class people that buy homes. This is not HGTV, flip this house like this you see. This is, if you truly want to make money and you want to have a sustainable business, you want to cater to the biggest population of buyers. The biggest population of buyers are the blue collar, I mean, is the working class people. I say, you know, the regular people, that's, that's what I cater to. That's where you're going to find deals. Yes, it's not as sexy as a million or $2 million house. No, it's not, right? However, you're going to make more money doing it. Your risk is a lot lower. What if they don't want to use our contract? Well, Brandon, it really truly depends on the deal. If we are actually going to buy it, I could use contract, but just know together with that contract, we purchased over 3,500 properties. And um, if you would like to schedule a call with me or ever get me on the phone with one of your sellers, I will help get you through that. I do that all the time where I, you know, don't mind to jump on the phone with a seller and help kind of answer any questions that they may have, because usually I want to use my contract because I want to have the opportunity to actually be able to wholesale that deal and be able to back out of the contract if I need to inside of the inspection period. Okay. Let me tell you something about lawyers. How about their lawyers? A lot of times people will say, well, let me run it through my lawyers. I had lawyers develop our contract. Whenever people take contracts to lawyers, they're going to pay a lawyer to look at the contract, right? Do you really think you're going to pay a lawyer to look at a contract and them not find something? Like literally the only hang up that an attorney had the other day with my contract was he wanted to say as is in the special stipulations contract already said that it literally is an as is purchase contract so not afraid to talk to attorneys whatsoever I know that contract like the back of my hand um, so that's just one of those things when you work with me I'm gonna be able to help you if the closing attorney doesn't like the contract then you're with the wrong closing attorney for absolute sure so if you're in an attorney state you can actually use you can actually use our, um, my closing attorney here in Atlanta. They're actually um, licensed in all of the states. It's just an, a closing attorney costs more. Um, a closing at attorney costs more than, let's say, a title company. So if you're in a title state, I like to kind of use a title company, an investor-friendly title company, to kind of save on some of those closing costs there. Um, if and people want to know, how do you get our contracts? Well, if you're one of our partners, we will give you one of our contracts because I can't just have people out there, you know, doing that. So, <clears throat> um, but if you would like to learn more about being one of our partners, just go to partnerdriven.com, right? Um, and by the way, um, yes, you can back out of of a California contract if something isn't right. However, your California or your car um, contract that's in California does not give me the right to assign properties, okay? Nor does it give me the right to double close if I were to pre-list that property on the MLS with the actions of trying to procure a buyer because our contracts have some special wording in there that makes it better. I'm not, if at all possible, you want to control your closings, you want to control your contracts, and you want to control the thing all the way through so you're not limited as to what you can do, okay? Um, and, and by the way, I do not mind. We've got, let me check my phone. We got some a few more minutes here so if y'all have any questions at all please don't hesitate so uh deborah i know we missed our call today so um actually i'm going to call you tomorrow morning again uh, i know we we're playing phone tag and i'll go over exactly how to work with those numbers 
um, on how to find a good deal. I actually can't wait to speak to you. Any other questions? Well, let me stop sharing this. Oh, good. I finally figured that out. That was good. <laughs> Do y'all? Hey, Rafa. Hey, Julie. How are you? Good, good. I'm so glad you're on. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to jump on and thank you for this amazing webinar. I know that um, it, it was funny how we got here. Peter was supposed to come tonight, and, and you were like, "Well, I got this amazing presentation to share with everyone," and uh, it, you most definitely did. Um, I did remember to record on my computer. <laughs> did you? Good. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, would I just wanted to jump on for a second. And number one, thank you, Julie, for this, um, uh, this awesome webinar tonight. And then as well as to invite everyone that's still on, that is with us, right? If you guys have registered for the Partner Driven Live event, right, make sure you come. Because what we talked about today was the mechanics. And we have some technology that we are about to release um, to our partners right that is going to completely change and revolutionize how you get this done right and it's not just some technology that's sitting out there for our partners that are on this call it's technology that's connected to our back office and everything else that we guys are that we're doing together um and so we want you guys to make sure that you guys show up and come uh, we'll begin we're going to be giving away the live the partner driven laptop Man, I was going to show everybody, but then I realized because I have the same laptop, but I'm like, I'm on the laptop. <laughs> You're on the laptop. It's actually yeah. upstairs. I forgot to bring it down. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know what? We can go grab it real quick. As I'm telling everyone else, uh, all the other things that are happening at the Partner Driven Live. Uh, because the, the, besides going through the Partner Driven Live process together, right, we're also going to be launching this new app that's going to turn this driving for dollars strategy. Oh. They're doing some renovations still upstairs, Julie. Here we go. One second. But I think this will be worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Mm -hmm. It's ready to go. Um, we are doing all of the work that is necessary, including printing all of your books uh, for all the people that are coming. We have some really cool surprises. Some cool swag that uh, we're not going to announce that it's going to be available and we're going to be hooking our partners up with. All in all, it's going to be an incredible event and um, we want everyone to be able to come join us. So if you're registered, make sure you come. If you haven't registered yet, right, Partner Driven Live, there's just a few spots left. Um, you can go in there. And guys, if you can't make it, it's all right. Schedule a call with our team. Right, because if you're interested in partnering, if you're interested in uh, joining this team, all you got to do is go to www.partnerdriven.com, and it's the beginning of the journey. And Julie, that's what I had to to add and to thank you for this awesome webinar tonight. I don't know if there's any more questions because we do have a few more minutes. Well, um, I do uh, have a few questions. So someone wants to know when signing a contract, does it have to be notarized? Absolutely not. Let me tell you another trick of the trade. If you are going on an appointment to go see a house, bring a contract with you. Okay. Assume that when you go to these, con when you go to these appointments, start taking pictures as you're walking through the house. Because the best opportunity to get that house under contract is while you're there, right? While you're, while you're at the appointment. So that's the number one thing um, that you've got to do, but you do not have to have it notarized. And by the way, thank you, Rafa, for sharing that about the library. Excited about that. But um, that's really what we have for you this evening. I encourage you to get out there do some driving for dollars, make these cold calls, send out these letters. You are one deal away to your first deal. Now that sounds kind of cliche. You might only be two or three deals away from quitting your full-time job and do full-time. So put the effort in, 
and it will be one of your favorite strategies. Cold calling will be fun once you, once you start becoming successful at it. And always, always, always be yourself. Don't pretend anybody else. Don't talk like someone else. Don't be like anybody else. Be yourself, okay? All right. Well, y'all have a blessed evening, um, and I will talk to y'all maybe probably like next Tuesday. Um, for those of you that are on the team um, or in our partnership program, come to the live event this weekend. I cannot wait. Cannot wait to see everybody. All right. Good night, everybody. Have a beautiful evening.